Hey, Mike. Hey, what? How would you like some basketball news? Okay, it's the way you're saying this. I'm just reading your body language and the way you're talking. You're looking at me like the Mavericks have made a trade. Hey, Mike. How would you like some Mavericks basketball news? Okay. Per Woj, and the draft compensation part is probably going to be the key and to tip how you feel about this yeah. deal. The Washington Wizards are near, nearing a deal to send Daniel Gafford to the Mavericks for Rashawn Holmes and draft compensation. At this moment, I do not see what the draft compensation is. But okay. we had a conversation about some of the key wing players, whether it was Wiggins or whoever. We talked about Kuzma. This is somebody who can rebound the ball for you, if, if, if that's what you're looking for. This is a true center. You want to kick him out and work him at the four with Lively, although I assume you would work Lively more at the four and Gafford yeah. at the five. This does fit a more pressing need for the Mavericks. I don't know what the rest of the compensation is, though. So I do love this in that the player you're getting. Until we know the draft picks, that could change my mind. It better not be a first-round pick. But if you look at when I said Wendell Carter Jr., who I really like. Yes. Do you have the draft pick compensation? No, okay. no, no, no. I don't. But he he's averaging 11 points yes. and 8 rebounds. He's 25 years old. He'll turn 26 next season at the start of October. 6 foot 10, 234. A guy who rebounds, a guy who's athletic, a guy that doesn't need the ball to be successful because you're probably True. not going to get the ball a whole bunch when you have a healthy Luka and a healthy Kyrie. You're going to get lobs. You're going to get opportunities like that. But So I like they need somebody to help out Derek Lively Jr. because you only have one center on your team. So now you have two and a guy who can pick up 24 to 30 minutes a night. And this is a player as we wait to see the draft compensation with the Mavericks per Woj on the brink of picking up Daniel Gafford that will be pairing with Lively for a while. Yes. So this is not this is not a uh, expiring contract deal or anything like that. Is he somebody who's under contract for the next three years? So this year and two more this years. And you already brought up he's going to turn 26. So I realize the NBA yeah. structure of age can be way different, but still a younger player to pair along live. Now, like the interesting point. thing is he doesn't shoot three-pointers at all. No. Like, literally doesn't shoot them at all. In his career, he shot one in his life in the NBA. Job. So Did he make it? You are getting – no. You, and it might have been a half-court heave. I have sure. no clue. But you're looking at a guy who's very similar to Derek Lively. I don't think the potential is there. Derek Lively has the ability, I think, two to three years from now to maybe make an all-star team. It's very tough at the center position when you have Jokic there and stuff like that. But I look at this and go, okay, you're getting what you need. You're getting an athletic big – who can switch on to littler guys because there's a lot of switching in the NBA. So if he has to guard, let's just say you're playing the Clippers and he has to guard Leonard or he has to guard Harden, it's like, oh, no, he's going to blow right by that guy, and now we're screwed. He's athletic enough to play defensively against multiple guys, and then he is a leaper. He's a Derek Lively offensive player around the basket, putting the ball back in off of offensive rebounds, getting a lob and dunking it. I think the great thing is, I know I hate on this guy, but as long as you're healthy, you will never see Dwight Powell touch the court again until the game's over. <laughs> well, I you will probably love this, too, that feeds into that. Is I was looking on StatMuse. He has a 70.8% scoring efficiency, which would be tops in the league. So when you talked about not needing the ball— yeah. But when he does get the ball, it is usually converted, although clearly in a smaller sample size, he's exceedingly efficient when he gets the ball. Yeah, this is, I, I think this is a good, it doesn't put the Mavs over the top, but this is something addition. that they desperately needed, Corey. So now we won't talk about, well, if they score 130, will they even win the game? Like, I do think now, <laughs> that's a big number, but if the Mavs can get to kind of over 120 points in a game, this will really help that they should be able to win because when Derek Lively is hurt, or he's out of the game resting, the other team can do whatever they want around the basket. Yeah, I'm, I'm just kind of watching some things, and he seems like a pretty decent passer, too, Yeah, uh, from, from the top of the key. I'm not saying from down in the, in the block. It seems like he can do some things there. And when you say leaper, I don't see the, like, uh, he's not on a pogo stick, but he can right. jump, and he's physically yeah. big. And this is, this is nice to see, and I think, uh, yeah, part of the rotation now, do I go, all right, we still have to find something else? Is there one other thing that this team needs 
that's not just Kyrie, Luca, and those two guys. I do know but, this. I was watching a video, and I, I, people were breaking this down on the Mavs. When Dorian Finney-Smith, just the other night, was sitting, he's intentionally sitting out because they're trying to trade him, and they don't want him to get hurt. He's sitting out tonight's game already. So maybe he is kind of hurt, but they're just making sure that they don't hurt his trade value at all. Yeah. They're saying if you read his lips, he, t- he tells Jaden Hardy, I'm coming back. Oh. Now, does that mean I'm coming back to play? Does that mean I'm coming back to Dallas? Yeah. You know, that's where you got to go, okay, if you read his lips right, he didn't say I'm coming back to the Mavericks. You know, like, you know, what does that mean? I think he could help out a lot because that's a guy defensively who's a premium defensive player who knows the system, fits in with Luka, great friends. By the way, Gafford averages right now 2.2 blocks per seventh, game. Seventh in the league. This yeah. year. So you're talking about defending the rim. So if a guy does get to the basket, he does make it difficult to score over just like Derek Lively does. Yes. And look, the other thing is uh, when you were talking about, Corey, I'm really curious about this. When you were talking about next moves for the Mavericks, I'm very interested that they took on a longer term player that clearly fits in this system alongside Lively yeah. is now you have another person that you're like, what about next year? What about next year? So I don't know what that means for the rest of the day, but yeah. this is already a good, I think it's a good move for the Mavericks, depending on, you might change if you're like, good Lord. So you're, you're thinking, in your, in your, you said rest of the day, longer term is a great addition to the plan, but now maybe find a mercenary. I, exa- is that what you're saying? Yes, because... Okay. You think about, and I don't know if you can afford that. I like we've talked about this before. I don't know if you can afford it, but now you have theoretically, let's say, you feel like you have at least six players that you see as part of this team going forward in terms of Hardy Green, Kyrie, Luca, Gafford. Is Green? Well, yeah. As much as they were trying to consider moving him in this conversation for now, yeah. Gafford and Lively, and that could shift. But yeah. at least you're looking at, hey, this maybe fits together more like a basketball team. Yes. And that's where Jason Kidd, you know, I don't love everything he said on, on his quotes when he was talking about Luca being better than Dirk and he's ready to be Jordan, Kobe, LeBron. I, I think there's a, a way bigger step he has to take in figuring out how do I win 50 plus games a year consistently. And I know Dirk had better teammates, but he was just doing that every year in his prime. Like, we're going to win 50 to 60 games every year, no matter what, no matter who's hurt around me, no matter what. I know how to win 50 regular season games. Luca has to get to that point. I think this helps. And I was just going to throw this out. He is still in rumors. I did see who's the really heavy guy on ESPN uh, that is LeBron's best friend. Oh, Windhorst? Windhorst. Windhorst. He was saying that he thinks Miles Bridges is going to get dealt today. The issue is, is the Mavs. Did you see what Miles said about yeah, that? Yeah, he's blocking he said, everything. He's I'm blocking. Not going all Here's the I'm thing not that's tough. He's is the Cowboys with their defensive cor- uh, uh, assistance. Yeah, he's the down. Mavs could only give him mid-level exception, which means he would be perfect for this team sure. if you take out what he's done off yep. the court. But on the court, he would be perfect. He could be your guy that gives you 25 a night. He would be your guy who's a great defender, a guy who's as physically strong that could take on Kawhi Leonard's. The issue and the problem is is then he would be a free agent and you can't compete in the market because you don't have his bird rights. Just another thing to throw out there. The Knicks also made a trade. They're picking up Bogdanovich. And so they're Which making... one? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's that is... Good, that's fair enough. Question. Bojan <laughs> okay. Bogdanovich Dang. is... And so we'll keep an eye on that. 2 p.m. When our show ends, the trade deadline ends, well, 2.05-ish usually. Do you think you find Gafford out. can be ready tonight for the Mavericks-Knicks game? I don't know if <laughs> Where's I... Washington at? Can we get him? Because Derek Lively's obviously dealing with nose surgery. Yes, and 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 obviously Lucas got his mask well, going now. Yeah, of course he'd be ready for tonight. Well, All Jason Kidd's going to say is go out there and be big, man. I was told by our buddy big. Walt, yeah. Luca had to take off that mask early in the game, and I thought it was because it was uncomfortable, but, but he told me that supposedly it wasn't mandated by the NBA. And I'm like, you mandate mask? Like, what was wrong with his mask? It's just oh. trying to cover a It's like a throwback in three or four years ago. So I'm just going to assume he was uncomfortable with it because after the first timeout or whatever, he took it off and then played without a mask.